Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Tattooed Chef's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Tattooed Chef is a plant-based food company that grows and sells organic non-GMO products. The company is headquartered in Paramount, California and was founded in 2018. The company went public in 2020 through a SPAC, Special Purpose Acquisition Company. The SPAC was called Forum Merger 2 Corp. It won an award for new best product at Sam's Club for its cauliflower mac and cheese. The company is making a lot of big pushes to get into the big box retailers. I feel it's pretty likely a larger company will acquire Tattoo Chef because lots of the bigger food brands have a ton of cash because people are going to supermarkets a lot now because restaurants have been shut down due to COVID. It was founded by Sam Galetti, who has 35 years of experience in the food industry. The actual tattoo chef, if you look at the company's logo, is of his daughter. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 1.6 billion market cap. They're trading at $20 a share and they have 81 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see in their first two years of financials, they have negative free cash flow. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they do have positive net income in 2019 and 2020. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that grew nicely from 85 million to 148 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And the difference is the gross profit. They do have positive gross profit each year. Then below that is operating expenses. Since the company is aggressively trying to grow its business, it did have negative operating income in 2020. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt and then other income and expenses. Since they had a positive in other income and expenses, that gave them positive net income in 2020. But I would focus on operating income when I look at the income statement. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. So the company has negative free cash flow each year since they're growing their business. They currently have over $130 million on their balance sheet. Most of that cash is from their IPO. So they can handle negative free cash flow for a while until they become profitable. Let's look at the capital structure. $234 million of equity, $2 million of debt. They're 99% equity, 1% debt and their WAC is 13.86%, and that's the discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven, that's 2.1 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.4 billion. We divide that by 81 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $18. They're trading at $20, so they're trading at a 13% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street values the company at $26, so they're saying it's undervalued. One analyst priced this stock in the past three months, and their valuation was $21. Even if I say a stock is overvalued, it doesn't mean I don't think the stock can go up in price. I think it could very well go up in price because the stock price is based off the of supply and demand of the market. If more people want to buy the stock, they'll push the price higher, which I think will happen with this stock. This is the stock price of the SPAC. 
This is around the time they announced they were going to acquire Tattoo Chef. You can see the stock price went way up to about $26. So you can see the stock price has been up and down the past few months. This stock has gone up 88% in the past 52 weeks while the S&P 500 went up 51%. The 52 week low was $10, the high was $29. And the stock is trading below its 50 day and 200 day moving average. About 1 to 2 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 81 million shares outstanding, 39 million are on float, 11% are held by institutions, and over 5% of the shares are shorted. In the past 90 days, this stock has gone down 17%, while its industry went up 7.5% and the market went up 8%. If you invested $10,000 when this SPAC first came out in 2017, you'd be at $20,000 today. The CEO of the company owns 39% of the stock, then UMB Capital, Forum Investors, Falcon, and Glazer. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 32, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 24, so investors are paying $24 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 10.9. Price to book is stock price over book value per share, they're at 6.9. Their return on invested capital is negative 6.8% because they have negative operating income. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, they have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity, they have a 29% ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can cover their current liabilities almost seven times since they have over 130 million of cash on their balance sheet. And the company seems to be well capitalized. They did have negative 20 million of free cash flow, but over 170 million of working capital. So they have 156 million of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of Beyond Meat, Conagra, General Mills, Hormel, Kellogg, Kraft, and Simply Good Foods. All in the same industry as Tattooed Chef. And if Tattooed Chef has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. They're worse in all the price multiples. They have a high current ratio because of its recent IPO. They have a high ROE. They're really low in debt, which is great. And their market cap is 1.6 billion, which is pretty big, but it's the smallest in this industry. And of course, they don't pay a dividend because they're not profitable. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 13% premium. This company seems to be doing a great job at growing its business, but their stock price is pretty high. 1.6 billion market cap is a decent size for a company that doesn't have that much revenue, 148 million. But the company has great potential, but they really need to grow a lot to make them undervalued in my eyes. But I think a lot of brands are looking at this company as an acquisition target. Because a lot of big names want to get into healthy food space. And the best way to do it is to acquire another company. Because it could take a really long time to develop food products that become popular in the mainstream. I rank their free cash flows 1 out of 10, their revenue 5 out of 10, and their ratios 2 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.